calls me an answer, when he calls me an answer, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere.
Krishna with a song. And now we have a Bible versus restitution by uh, Daisy and Karnataka. Take mic and stand there, both of you. Cool. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green branches. He has not in my soul. By his name, sing, he died not to the valley of shadow of death. I fear no evil, but of all with me. The Lord and the shop, they come for me. They prepare a city. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of this glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of this glory, hallelujah. Now see, Peter John went this way, okay? Peter, James, and John in the same.
past few years, Laura Capoli himself is known affectionately as. It's never too late to follow in God's footsteps. Laura Capoli from Salmas is known affectionately by her fellow church members as Grandma Laura. At 75 years old, she learned about the Seventh day Adventist Church through an invitation from her grandmothers. Grandma Laura was a firm believer in spiritistic practices, but as she came to know the truth, through the study of God's Word and participation in church services and events, her heart gradually filled with the love of Jesus. Even before descending into the baptismal waters, Laura participated actively in evangelism, helping to greet visitors at prayer meetings and collecting food for the needy, among many other activities. She especially likes to read Ellen White's books. The most important thing to Laura is to go to church to be with her church family. She's always present for services, regardless of cold weather, rain, or intense heat. Laura especially loves the week of prayer. All this love led her to baptism on December 13, 2015, at the age of 80. Laura joined a group that was organized to take the word of God and good news of salvation in Jesus to community members. She is a faithful Christian, missionary, and giver, and her life demonstrates contagious joy for being part of the Adventist family. Grandma Laura is a living testimony that the best place in the world is at the feet of the Savior. And she looks forward to Jesus' return when she can be with him forever. Grandma Laura is engaged in the mission and social projects of the church, including the building of a new church to safely accommodate all the community members. The building currently rented by the church is too small and doesn't have a separate room for the youth and children. They meet outside, leaving them subject to the dangers of traffic, heat, and bad weather. This quarter's 13 Sabbath offering will help establish churches in South America, including one in Grand Laura's town. There will be so much joy when church members can worship together in this new space and the youth and children are sheltered indoors. Please pray for this group and others throughout South America. Thank you for giving to the 13 Sabbath offering. report is entitled On the Lord of Sabbath and this is written by Philip from Brazil. It's coming to us from Brazil. So the mission report goes like this. Philip was studying fifth grade and this was the first time that uh, he faced the Sabbath problem in school. Uh, because uh, all the last few uh, I mean, previous classes, uh, he wasn't faced it. But in fifth grade, and he was supposed to attend some classes on Sabbaths, on Saturdays. But somehow he skipped the classes and he went into sixth class. At that time, the principal called for his prayers. Why he is not attending the school on, I mean, classes on Saturdays? And the father told the principal that we are Seventh-day Adventists. We believe and our faith is on Sabbath, so we don't attend the class on Saturday. But the principal said, this year of course it's okay, because this year we have only two, three classes uh, that take place on Saturdays. But when he goes forward, maybe there will be a lot of classes a lot of classes are scheduled on Saturdays, not even classes, even exams also, sometimes they schedule on Saturdays. That time, how can you do it? 
how can you uh, set? And they said they did not say anything, but they asked for a excuse, principal excuse, and he finished his sixth standard also. And then when he entered into the high school classes, there the problem arise. And he was supposed to attend the classes on Saturdays. And, but this boy is uh, simply skipping the classes on Saturday. Once again, the principal called the parents and said, it is not fair. And also he said, okay, sometime I can give you an excuse. And then what he said is, uh, you keep your son somewhere and all the other students uh, take classes in the other classrooms. But this boy felt very uncomfortable to sit all alone in one classroom and then uh, read the Sabbath school lesson or going to something else. And what he said, you know, just because he was a small fellow, he felt that, he thought that if God was faithful to Daniel and Joseph, he will be faithful to me also. This is the, the uh, thought that he had in his mind. So what he was thinking is, uh, God is so much faithful. God did many things to Daniel and Joseph, he will definitely do for me also, as I am skipping the classes on Saturdays. So he finished his almost all the classes, sir. and the last the high school, last class, he came and uh, this was a high time for him to skip the classes, but still, but still, he was not attending the classes. What he's doing is uh, he was taking his friend's books and then he was preparing for his exam. And somehow he finished his uh, high school without attending the Sat uh, Saturday classes. Then he wanted uh, to join in college, universities, they call it as a universities. And then, you know, their classes, uh, the times of the classes is 1.30 uh, uh, p.m. to 8.40 p.m. on Monday to Fridays. Even sometimes on Saturday mornings, but he cannot do. He doesn't know what to do. But he's not attend, attending the classes. It was really a high time and he was, uh, he doesn't know what to do yet. But he's not attending the classes. So, he was skipping the classes and doing something, reading the textbooks or taking lessons or notes from other friends and doing his, uh, doing his studies. Okay. And then, after she entered into the university, his main dream, his main dream was to become a doctor, a physician. So he has to write one uh, exam, entrance exam. Even that exam also came on Saturday. He did write that exam on Saturday and he was waiting for the exam to fall on other weekdays. So somehow, somehow he wrote the exam, he got through the exam and he finished his uh, I mean, he finished here. Uh, he joined in the medical college, okay. And on the in the third year of his uh, uh, third year of his uh, studies, medicine, <coughs> one exam fell on two classes fell on Saturday. He skipped those two classes, and the teacher failed him. Maybe they were. Uh, thinking of many many years but the teacher failed him and asked him how are you going to become a, a doctor if you are skipping the classes like this and this profession demands a lot from you you are skipping the classes but this profession doctor profession it demands from you a lot we cannot do anything except detention so he cannot do anything, he too cannot do anything, he doesn't want to attend on, or he doesn't want to write exams on Saturdays. And so for the same semester where he failed, he registered for one more semester. But what happened is, he came to know large number of students failed in the semester. And so the authorities, or the principal or somebody else in the university, they uh, they offered them extra classes. They offered them extra classes, but that extra classes were not on Saturdays. 
other week of the days, other days of the week. So he gladly attended those classes and then he finished his, he got through the exam. But he finished his studies, I mean, uh, as a doctor. But now the problem arises to, to write his medical license. Medical license exam also came on the same Saturday, but he skipped two, three exams. He didn't write. But somehow he got through when he was waiting for the exam to fall on other days of the week, he finished it. And in the same university where he studied, he became a professor there. He became a professor and also he was one of the um, faculty members. So, there the other teachers are the faculty, they were talking about one student, one girl student who was an Adventist and her teacher raised a question like this. Her teacher, how will she graduate if she misses my classes on Saturdays? This was the question raised in the faculty meeting and the response for this question is another teacher who was a well known for this Philip and he said you have given proof of how someone can miss Saturday classes and still graduate right here in front of your eyes. This is the response that other teacher, a teacher of uh, Philip and he said you are a living example. You skipped all the classes on Saturdays, but still you graduated and you became a professor here. And this was the response for the teachers. The sad story is repeating itself just as God, God has felt when he was faithful. God will help every faithful student. Then will turn them, their experience will turn into a mission story. Yes, just uh, Philip's experience is uh, a mission story for us. How he skipped the classes and how he finished his uh, medicine. So, the, <coughs> this is the story of Philip. And now here, a part of today's 13th Sabbath offering will help establish the uh, new churches in Philip's homeland of Brazil. So, and also uh, some of the four churches will be opened in Bolivia. So they are requesting us when we give our 13th Sabbath offering, give liberally so that this offering will meet the expense of constructing the churches and all those things. So they are requesting us, give us offerings liberally for this 13th Sabbath. Thank you all. Shall we even rise to our present presence and this too make a um, closing song? Let's have a closing song. Father in heaven, thank you Lord for the Sabbath morning that you have given. Thank you Lord for the uh, Sabbath school program that you have given. And the children, very nicely, they have been reciting the Bible verses and singing songs for you. We thank you for the mission report. And thank you for the special song and the mission spotlight. Lord, we have been blessed by all these services. Lord, as we continue to worship you on this day, Lord, accept our worship, bless uh, all the members who have joined us in church. Lord, bless us, it is for you are since from the shop there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a special Sabbath for us. And once again, I welcome all our church members, especially our pastor, Pastor Jeevan, and also Mrs. Serena, Blessy, and George. We are very happy to have you with us. And I thank all our participants, Pushita, for her beautiful number, especially the small kids, Karnakar and Daisy, for their uh, special number, and also. Memory versus presentation and Sally for giving us a uh, song service. Thank you, thank you all once again. And Sabbath School Lesson Study Telugu class. Telugu class will be taken by Elena Kushmangari and uh, Children's class will be taken by Pray, Mrs. Pray. Thank you. <laughs>